The Isaiah Factor Uncensored starts right now. And good evening and welcome to The Factor Uncensored. Controversial YouTube star Kevin Samuels has died from an apparent heart attack. According to a friend we talked to tonight, we broke the news to you here on The Factor last night. Samuels is best known for dishing out some very controversial relationship advice, but coming down extremely hard. Some say on black women specifically. Take a listen. You're running back size. Okay. You can hit the A gap like a yeah. All right. I accept so don't that. come in here talk about what men should not be able to do when they got to accept uh, somebody who can run out the power eye. How tall are you? Five four. Uh, dress size. Six. That's your picture. That is my picture. How recent is it? That's a ten year old picture. But I still. Look <laughs> like that. Uh, beautiful women don't don't have ten year old pictures, ma'am. Now tonight, a Houston attorney and mentee and good friend of Samuel's is on the factor. That attorney, as of this evening, has been appointed the family spokesperson. But we talked to him before that development. Dennis Sperling talks about Samuel's impact nationwide. I got to know Kevin because uh, I have a podcast, uh, Dennis Sperling on YouTube, and uh, having become very, you know, effective at what I do. Uh, he popped up on a mutual friend's podcast and we began to talk. He uh, then invited me uh, to his uh, his Facebook uh, room where it's called The Mix and it's where you get couples together. And um, yeah, and, that, and that's actually how I met my fiance, ironically, but, but that's how I met him. And uh, he and I just kept in contact over the past two and a half years and We'd start working together, but his main thing was getting couples together, getting people married again, telling women, hey, you know what? The society that we live in has, has caused you ladies to become narcissists and to overvalue yourselves. You got three kids by three different men. You're 150 pounds overweight. You're not going to marry a millionaire. You should talk to that plumber or that electrician or that hardworking guy who you can build a life with, you know, because as it is right now, you know, here in America, we teach the men that they they should undervalue themselves, and we teach the women that they should overvalue themselves. And that was this basic message. For some, he was brutally honest. For others, he was brutally cruel. Mm -hmm. uh, where would you stand in describing your friend? And I and I'd say that because you actually had a relationship with him. You knew him, and it led to your fiance. So, how would you describe how what your friend did? Well, for those people who think he was cruel, people who've been lied to their whole lives, they see the truth as cruelty. Kevin Samuels was accurate. He backed his statements up with facts from the CDC reports. Um, in the black community alone, 80% of the women have children out of wedlock. Uh, and that's being sired by 20% of the men. 51% of black men don't have children. 31% of black men are married and live with their, their, their wives. So that means there's about 18% of men, give or take, who's siring children with these women. And so he pointed that out. He said, that's why black men aren't getting married. But see, the thing about Kevin Samuels that, that you all don't know is that his, his vision, his legacy was going to expound, expand past YouTube. He, he had visions of, of starting a, um, a, a mega sort of entertainment uh advertising where we would talk about men's clothing, fitness, um, suits, cologne, those colognes and things that he would advertise. Mm -hmm. He was doing that because he was getting paid for it. He was a brilliant businessman. And the fact that he was willing to speak the truth to people and was accurate about it, all that did was endear him to the rest of us who recognized the truth he was speaking. So for those people who are his detractors, listen to the man's podcast. And you'll see he was speaking the truth. It's the reality that we live in now. Now, one of the things you said was he was talking about getting yourself together, staying in shape. And that's one of the things he did. And that's why this is so shocking to so many people. Cardiac arrest, heart attack, and people are trying to wrap their heads around that. This is a man who taught, uh, who taught many people uh, how to live better, how to eat better. And so it's kind of like, 
how did this happen to him? Well, you know, unfortunately, um, he basically was a one man show, you know, every night for the past seven years, most of you all didn't, didn't know him till about two and a half years ago, but for the first five years, he spoke to men. He said, you need to get yourself together. You you're five foot five, uh, 280 pounds, and you only make $30,000 a year. Yet you want this supermodel to be your woman. That's not going to happen. And he was see, cruel. You want to see cruelty? <laughs> Look at how he <laughs> talked to some of those guys. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> my God, he would have you leaving, leaving that podcast, you know, like, two feet shorter than when you walked in, but you <laughs> equally know, honest to both sexes, equally honest, but it really picked up because no one has been brave enough to speak to women in an honest way to, to, to tell them, Hey, you know what? You need to come down off of that ledge that you're on. You're going to die alone. You're going to get a dog. You're going to be a cat lady. You think you're better than you think you're better than your husband and you can do better. So you're willing to file this divorce to get back out there on that market. And what you're going to get is a rude awakening. Um, but as far as his health, I mean, Kevin says this, and I don't want to speak too much beyond what the family would want to be said, but Kevin fought and conquered cancer at a very young age. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I can only imagine what that did to his body. But, um, you know, just hanging out with him, he didn't overeat, he didn't undereat, but I know that the stress of putting on those shows and you yourself know what it's like, man. And, and me, I've had the experience now being on my podcast. You got, you have to interact with the public. You're constantly on edge. Um, the only time I've ever seen him truly relaxed is down in Miami for his birthday. And uh, everybody knows he says, I don't drink, but um, you know, I, you know, me, I'm known for purchasing a few bottles here and there. <laughs> and, and you've hung out with me before too. And uh, so, you know, after uh a couple of bottles, man, he was dancing and really just enjoying his birthday. And to me, I look at that like that that was his going away party, as far as I'm concerned, just seeing him smile and happy and relax and amongst friends. And my fiance were there, another young lady named Melanie King, who's a very popular uh, YouTuber. We were all there just hanging out in Miami. And it was really impromptu because he didn't tell anybody it was his birthday. We were just down there to meet. And he was like, yeah, it's my birthday. I'm like, what? I'm like, you know, it's time to turn up, man. You know, <laughs> there you go. There you go. So as we wrap up, Dennis, what did he mean to you? Well, man, um, we haven't had a voice of truth here in the United States in many years. Our preachers stopped speaking the truth. Our, our screenwriters and actors stopped speaking the truth to us. Our politicians stopped speaking the truth. We have a lot of panderers out there. And what Americans need, what the world needs is truth speakers, because here's the thing, a lot of us have been misled. You know, he was, he was clearly a mentor to some, he was a father to others. They referred to him as the godfather. He was that middle-aged 50 year old man that many of these young folks didn't have who would be honest with them. You know, he wasn't a man who was afraid to speak the truth. A well-studied, brilliant black man the way he dressed, the way he carried himself with dignity. What you weren't going to do is cut him off on his podcast and interrupt him and treat him like he was a child. He, he commanded respect. But then when you would meet him in public, man, he didn't hide. He, he spoke to the people. He's more, he was more gracious than any of the actors or entertainers I've ever seen. They could learn a lesson from him. Instead of, he never had security around him. No bodyguards. <laughs> We're in Miami. Dudes are running up on him. One guy, most people had positive things to say. Somebody else was like, you're going to get yours. He just graciously smiled at him and kept it moving. In New York, as crowded and rowdy as New York can be, no bodyguards. I mean, he was a man of the people. And if you ever really had a chance to be around him and sit and listen to him, you'd see how brilliant he was. But to me, he was a mentor. He was, uh, you know, and, and at my age, you know, it's like, I'm too old for mentors, but, <laughs> but, but, but he was truly a mentor, a big brother. And I appreciate his legacy. And I hope that those men who are in the manosphere, which he has taken mainstream now, like the things we talk about that used to be part of the dark corners of the internet that everybody thought was crazy. They called them incels and these now it's major talking points. You have Hollywood being affected by it. So, he, he meant a lot to him. He was the, and I describe it like this, he was the uh, aircraft carrier that was out front leading. 
mm-hmm. and uh, s- surrounded by a battalion of ships of truth speakers. And so uh, that's what he meant to me. He was a forerunner to, he was a harbinger to what I think America needs to get back uh, to our traditional values, family, raising children, being good citizens, being good Christians, because he, he taught Bible study, if you didn't know. And, uh, and I think, and, and I appreciate him. And that, that's what he meant to me, brother. All right. Attorney Dennis Sperling, we appreciate you sharing this information about your friend, Kevin Samuels. Thank you, sir, for joining us here on The Factor Uncensored tonight. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Isaiah.